the contemporary industrial food system isn't sustainable and we need to have a, a new way of farming and producing food and that new way is going to be focused on nurturing Mother Earth, nurturing community, putting people to work in wholesome, rewarding jobs, and producing wholesome, nutritious, and uh, satisfying foods. And the Sawasan Farm is an educational program that is designed to do just that. Here at farm school, you basically get your hands dirty from the first day um, and you start farming. You really get into the thick of it right away. It takes a lifetime to be a farmer. You're always learning and the only way to really learn is to get fully immersed in it. The farm school is a nine month program that takes you through a whole growing season from planting in the spring all the way to seed saving in the fall. To be successful, farmers need a whole range of different skills from mechanics to carpentry to business planning, animal welfare to soil biology and so much more. Students get to learn a lot of these skills from teachers and farmers who are leaders in their fields. Anyone can attend farm school. No prerequisites, no exams. All you need is a desire to learn to grow some serious food in a sustainable way. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that are really interested in farming and moving towards farming. However, I think a lot of people I know don't know where to start and they don't have the resources and the tools to begin that. And so I think that's why this is a really good program. Uh, sort of demystifies it. We get to feast a lot at the farm. We love to eat and share our food and there's this tremendous pride in eating what you've grown so a large component of farm school is sharing food and gathering and eating it. These are scapes, uh, Corinne? Mm -hmm. yeah. Lusher? I love food. I, I'm, I'm just a farmer because I want to eat the best food that I can eat. Whenever I like cook for my friends and stuff, they're like, how does this taste feel good? I'm like, it's just so fresh. And like beyond like needing more farmers, we need more people who are actually like connecting back to the land. I find that we're so disconnected and attached to screens and like we're losing that like sense of like groundiness and being a part of the earth and we need people who are doing the farming that we're doing because we're not we're not we're not farming and putting carbon back out into the atmosphere the type of farming that we do we pull carbon out of the atmosphere and back into the soil and that's what we need to be doing we need to be focusing on sustainability and actually giving the earth a chance to survive and not just like the earth but all of the species that are a part of it and that includes us organic farming, how to grow vegetables. What they also need to learn as a part of that is making their farm a part of a healthy ecology, but having uh, supporting biodiversity and pollinator diversity so that farm could be really a hub of uh, life that supports our whole ecological system. The 24,000 species of bee, over 80% of them are ground nesting bees. And when we think about the decline in bees, I think that it really speaks to how we disrespect soil. For a lot of people, soil is dirt, but really soil is a complex living organism. It's really a super organism uh, which supports life. So it's really important to be a real closed loop, closed cycle. And what I mean closed loop is that all the nutrients are recycled and that we use the nutrients on the farm. The long-term goal is to not have to uh, import any compost, is to recycle all of our own nutrients. And I think it's really important to have the pigs and the chickens because they fertilize our soil. Just after having the pigs on rotation with the chickens in the backfield on which we're growing this year, we could really, really see how much the soil had improved over one season. So they play a really, really important role. Mm. 
not all insects are pests or good guys. There are 95% of them or 98% of them are just there or they're part of the background and they don't damage the crop. They're not necessarily good for the crop, they're not bad for the crop. And that's the thing, to keep our biodiversity, we need to not kill things. A spider, a real spider. It's fine, good one. Pesticides are generally hard on the environment. They're hard on beneficial insects. They're hard on non-target insects. They're hard on people. Um, they get in the water. We don't know even all of the effects of pesticides. If they're killing a pest, they could potentially kill something else. And when you're using your natural biological controls, you know what they're killing. They're part of the natural environment anyway. Sometimes they don't do as good a job as a pesticide, but in an organic system, that is your risk. That's why organic products are valued higher in the market. See that little critter. It kind of looks like a miniature dragonfly only. Uh... <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's still there. <laughs> Agriculture has played a substantial role in climate change. The food system as a whole may contribute up to 50 percent of all anthropogenic greenhouse gases. So we're conscious about uh, the excessive use of energy in agriculture. We are working to minimize fossil fuel consumption and uh, we have installed a solar powered produce cooler on this farm. It's the first of its kind in British Columbia. See that little nub there? Right there? There you go, good job. It makes the tomatoes last longer when the green part stays on. Uh, we decided it would be a good idea to have a farm school come to the lands. So I joined last year and we started with a dirt field and now we have quite a bit of infrastructure in place and we grow an amazing amount of food. Last year when I started farm school, our eating habits were not very good at home and my kids really didn't like vegetables. I could get them to eat broccoli and that was about it. But um, since working at the farm and taking the course last year, I've been able to start bringing home veggies and I think it's benefited our family quite a bit actually. They're starting to try more things and hopefully I think every year they'll just start to eat better and better and when they grow up, they can pass on some healthy eating habits to their own children. For the TFM members, this farm is a legacy. There's a lot of things on the farm that are long-term projects, like planting nut trees, um, raspberry bushes, all of the perennial. The orchard here is only going to be producing really in five to ten years. And a lot of the TFM members are getting boxes every week. So the CSA boxes are a weekly delivery to our members of vegetables that are in season at our farm. They're fresh, they're harvested exactly when they're meant to be harvested. You know, they were grown with love and organically and good soil that provides all the sweetness that is required. And then the whole education process about local food continues at home when they bring food and, and then they share this newly acquired knowledge with their family. At the end of the program, you have this absolutely amazing opportunity to um, have an incubator plot and what the incubator plot is you get uh, up to an acre of land leased out to you where you can start your own little farm. Becoming a farmer it's not cheap and so to have the opportunity to get some land leased you have access to all the equipment it allows you to actually have the potential to grow into the farmer that you want to grow and to build a business that can actually be successful and I think that's absolutely one of the coolest things about this program is that support network that occurs after you graduate. Good job guys. It's a very special bond that we have with our domesticated livestock and it's a it's a solemn and important moment. So I really appreciate everybody considering the, our relationship with these animals and and why we're doing what we're doing. Liver is, is one of the places where you'll really see if you've got a healthy pig and this is like an incredible beautiful liver like completely even in color and everything. Um, if you slaughter an unhealthy pig you'll or like a pig, especially that was raised in an unhealthy system, you'll see it'll be like completely mottled. It can have worms in it. And we can't really compete in the modern industrial farming model. So the, the way that we have access to markets is by producing a very high value, high quality product for a local market and essentially working to feed our friends and neighbors in our own communities uh, rather than shipping our meat throughout the world. So that smaller scale model is truly much better for animal welfare. 
we become very close with our pigs and they really have a, a great life all the way up until the moment that we slaughter them and harvest them for food. It's just a great collaboration between uh, Tawasson First Nation and the school and uh, we're just happy to see everybody come together and uh, create such a great opportunity for not only for Tawasson First Nation members but for the surrounding communities and municipalities so it's just really awesome to be a part of and we're just happy to see the growth and and the, the teachings that are happening here. So thank you everybody for coming. I believe, and the Institute for Sustainable Food System is focused on advancing human scale, community focused alternate market farming that's ecologically sound. And that kind of uh, food system can only be achieved on a smaller scale. But this kind of farming, very importantly, is about community. It's about producing food for the community. It's about providing economic opportunity for the community. It's about providing amenity to the community. And it's about farming and food that's produced in a way that takes care of the land. I wanted to become a farmer and two years ago I quit my job and, and here I am now and I can say like, I'm a farmer. And <laughs> even sometimes when I say it, I like don't believe it. And you know, I, I I'm a farmer now and that's 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 absolutely amazing to go and pursue a dream and and to achieve it that's that's really cool for me